Dr. Mark Janghizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about emotional expressions and why emotional expressions are important. At FreeX, it's one of our pillars is understanding that free expression is really about free emotional expression. It's much less so about free speech than people realize. And emotional expression is one of the things that is underlying uh, some of the COVID hysteria or much of the origins of it. It's the lack of our ability to emotionally express in social media uh, the way we do in normal life that uh, is one of the things that broke, that led to the kind of positive feedback loop that led to the mass delusion that we're still dealing with today. And masks which cover over our expressions, emotional expressions, are also fundamentally uh, uh, limiting our free expression. Because even though we can speak, and to the extent that you can still be heard, our emotional expressions are severely dampened or wrecked entirely. And it's those emotional expressions which again undergird free speech and free expression and their importance and how they serve their purpose in terms of undergirding freedom more generally. So why is it that emotional expressions should be important at all? They seem like these wispy things that only folks who aren't serious scientists, aren't serious thinkers should engage in. So why should emotional expressions be important? As an analogy, let's imagine a science paper. In a scientific paper, I might make some claim that, let's say, African elephants are larger than Asian elephants. You know, some, it doesn't really matter what it is. Now, if I just ended it there, well, there's no confidence level that I've told you that on the basis of my data, I'm this sure, I'm this confident that African elephants are larger than Asian elephants. Without saying this confidence level, you really have no idea whether to believe my claim that African elephants are larger than Asian elephants. It's because I put like P less than 0 0.001 or 0 0.0001 that you say, oh, okay, there's a, the, on the basis of the data, it justifies this level of confidence in that kind of claim. Now, so scientists in a very scientific paper are in some sense not having to engage in emotional expressions as we'll see because they can elicit, they can communicate their confidence in exact quantitative means from the data using statistics. And intellectuals who might be writing very careful papers in some journal article and then it's not quantitative, they can pull from varieties of qualitative language like I'm uh, extremely certain or I'm a little bit certain or I'm indubitably certain. They can come up with all of these varying levels, you know, dozens and dozens of these if you use enough modifiers that kind of titrate how certain they are on the basis of the kinds of arguments that they're making. Now in real life, with real social animals, we didn't have the ability to utter and communicate quantitative numbers on the basis of data that from, you know, driving them from the data. And we didn't have the ability to speak at all, something I've argued in my earlier book, Harnessed. You know, language is something that we've sort of culturally evolved that fits our brains. Yet, we have an amazing intel amazingly intelligent brains which are accumulating data and accumulating information all the time. And it accumulates this information on the basis of the data that it accumulates it needs to not only believe things and communicate to others that I believe things, but here's how certain that I am. And it's that certainty again that makes others decide whether to believe me or not, because that's exactly what allowed you to believe whether my paper about African elements, elephants being bigger than Asian elephants, you know, is it worth believing? Well, it depends on how confident I am or how confident I can defend I am based on the data. So in real life, the way that we communicate confidences are by virtue of emotional expressions. It's those emotional expressions in confidence itself is an emotional expression. If I'm confident, then I might push forth pride. I say, no, no, I'm, I'm very strong. I'm pride. I, what I'm saying, it comes along with pride. If I'm, if I'm show humility, then I'm doing the opposite. So I'm not particularly certain. So, you know, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. And these things can be communicated, of course, with words, but with the intonation of the voice and the certainty of the voice, as well as the facial expressions and even the color of the skin. I can also communicate in our emotional expressions, we communicate how certain I think you are on the basis of the kinds of things that I know on the basis of the kind of claim that you're making. I can show respect. I can show very, uh, uh, respect towards you, saying oh, your argument's pretty good. Or I can show disdain. Now this kind of space of how confident or not confident I am or how confident I think you are versus how not confident you are, are the key things that we do when we do them with emotional expressions. As I'll, as I'll talk about later, we get a much richer explosion of emotional expressions when you combine these things with uh, uh, my acknowledging what your claim was. So for example, if you said that you're much more confident 
um, than I previously suggested, then I might then, and that I'm much less, so you, so you say, you know, hey, I'm really confident and you're, you know, you're not very confident, I might be unhappy. In the context of me being unhappy, me showing something like pride is something more like anger in that case. Um, so you end up with this four dimensional space and explosion, which I'll show later. But the point is, it's exactly these emotional expressions in this framework that we've built for the last 10 years in terms of understanding and deriving emotional expressions from first principles. It's these emotional expressions that convey these certainties. And without certainties, there's no reason to believe anyone. Now, the second part, you might ask, well, how is it that uh, social creatures like us can honestly convey confidences? In the paper, the science paper, I could say, well, look, here's the data, and here's how it just leads to these stats and these confidence levels that you should have. How can I actually honestly say my confidence? Why should you believe me? Why am I not lying? And the reason is because emotional expressions, unlike papers, uh, scientific papers, come along with bets. If I show a lot of confidence in my claim, or whatever it is that I'm making, it comes across as a bet. I've bet social reputation. I've bet social capital. People will be watching, and if it turns out that I'm wrong later, I'll lose reputation. That reput the currencies, the reputation currencies rise and fall depending upon the kinds of confidences that we claimed and whether we, it panned out to be true or not. The reason that emotional expressions work instead of stats is because we're putting forth bets like in poker. It's emotional expressions that convey all of these confidences and they convey confidences to some extent honestly because we're putting reputation at stake. You take away our emotional our ability to express these emotional expressions, uh, to convey these emotional expressions, if you take that away, you've taken our, our only natural, organic, evolved ability to communicate confidences to others. And that's exactly how these networks of reputation work. That's exactly how social networks move slowly towards the truth. And that's what makes us um, uh, work at all in terms of being believable. In a sense, emotional expressions are statistics for dummies. If you take that away, we just become dummies. And that was your science moment.